it, it can't synergize well, but I do like the counters that Viking has versus them. You know, this Razor versus the Gyro yeah. could be pretty tough for them to break the link. Rubik might be able to assist with that. I like the Abaddon pick versus this like Beastmaster and Earth Spirit and, and all that because he can actually remove some of these Silence, remove those Axis stacks quite nicely. So we'll see how it ends up going. The Ember last pick for me, I don't know. This one feels kind of this one feels kind of weird. I feel like it's going to be a pretty tough game for him it's overall because there's a lot of game, silences yeah. and there's a pounce. There's like four, there's a yeah. lot of little things that trip him up. I'll be honest with you. Oh, I mean, yeah. Every, every hero other than Kezu's Razor has, has some sort of a catch, right? You know, you're, you're playing yeah. into lots of things. You've got to be very careful about. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be an easy game for Manboss, but obviously a game that Manboss said. You know, he said, "I've got this. Pick me, Ember. It's going to be great." He so, did. Uh, I mean, he so has we'll see to what he can do it. against it. It's just, yeah, yep. it, it doesn't seem easy. No, and I don't know. I'm, I didn't. Get, I haven't seen this lane. I haven't seen the Beastmaster versus Ember, but sure, it sounds pretty good for Beastmaster. Sounds just yeah, fine. Sure, yeah. like the levels will come out for the Ember, and you won't be. Maybe not be, can't break the Flame Guard unless you get Axe stacks. But who cares, right? You're gonna have this incredible base damage because your Axe damage, your Axe stacks, so you'll be able to get last hits always. So it looks good. I like this dual lane. This is one of my favorites. This one, it's been tried and tested so many times though, the Rubik Centaur. So for Hippo Maniacs, that's the lane that I'm gonna watch because they can get kills even versus something like Slark. Slog has to be a little cautious just from the co the constant right clicks and harassment that comes out. No, true, yeah. They're, they're definitely going to be able to put some pressure onto, onto that safe lane of Viking. Oh, well, let's see. And yeah, you know, may maybe there's something about the Ember that's, that's going to be able to do something in this lane against Beastmaster that other heroes have, have struggled, but it's it's very I hard just don't to think see. So. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just that one stack of axes starts just beating him out of the lane. I mean, that's the... The thing, sure, as you said, you're going to protect yourself from some of the damage from the axes, but the debuff's still there, and yep. uh, you're a melee hero. You're just going to get beaten out of lane by by the Beastmaster just punching your face in. Yeah, he has he has six stacks already, so he's already up at what 30% damage amp. If the if the if the Beastmaster just right clicks him once or twice, he's going to be hitting from like a hundred damage almost. I mean, so has it? to back off, yeah. wait for that stacks to fall off, and then Beast just okay. So yeah, looks like this lane's going to be pretty it's going to be tough. pretty grim for them, for yeah. Spirit. I mean, I guess when levels come out, when levels come yeah. out, we'll be able to stabilize a little bit better, but it's yeah. it's still probably going to be pretty tough. Like, Boom's just going to hit him. You can never really trade back in the same efficiency as an Ember, so yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. As we see Aramis start doing the Earth Spirit shenanigans, pulling creeps behind the tower. Abaddon will contest him slightly. These are scary places to be as an ABBA too. Like the, I see this so many times, these melee heroes versus Earth Spirit. If Earth Spirit gets like all these last hits, hits two, kicks you under tier two, you're dead. So Senny has to be a little cautious, but we watch the range creep. I feel like it does this every time lately. Walks into the tower. Lane will push back into Hippomaniac shortly, but still they, they did what they wanted up here on Viking. Yeah, Kazu. Hey, but it was up enough for the starting link that you should be able to get some good CS in here. But uh, Kuro and Senny still doing their best to find what they can behind this tier 1 tower. Senny, he's going to get kicked in. Oh, won't I and it's Courier. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, Courier and Senny. Is he, he's got a TP. And he will, he will, uh, yeah, he'll make him back to the tower in time. Meanwhile, and on the Shad. bottom lane, Shad's taking quite a beat down here from Tipek. And Moth. Uh, oh, Shad. Oh, Shad. Bouncing back in oh. there. <laughs> So and a courier. We're still waiting. All right, so Hippo Maniacs, they'll get a courier here. Okay. Trade back. It looks right. like both of those uh, safe lanes are having some problems. Slark, at least nine last hits. Oh, Gyro's mid. actually only got five. This gank from Aramis comes in with the kick back onto Manboss. That's Manboss. He'll try and turn. Well, it's going to be Viking getting the first blood there. Nice move from oh, Aramis. God. It begins. The first blood on the Beastmaster. To get the stacks prepared. He's already crushing the mid lane. Uh-oh. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. What are sort yeah. of the upsides at the moment big. for Hippos? I mean, top lane, they can, I mean, Kezu's not, he's not free farming on this Razor. But then no. again, I guess the same to be said for Curry up there. You know, Curry, the yeah. carry Jara, also struggling to find much from the lane. I see this move again around mid. Perfect move, perfect time from Aramis to, to get involved in the action. And that's all they need. Just a little bit of control on the Ember. So Boom can get the opportunity to just get those Axe stacks up and, and beat them down. And now he's going to work on a stack already, a small camp stack, up to 29 last hits to the 13 of the Ember. He's at level 5. We've almost got one component online, and I'd imagine we see more stacks coming out soon, especially from Aramis whenever he has a moment to leave Kezu. Get those at the ready for your Beastmaster. So yeah, pressure will probably be on Hippomaniacs to look to contest those stacks when they do start coming out. At least they do have some pretty decent ones with the Centaur, with the Ember, and with the Gyro. If they run in together, they can look for stuff. 
But Gyro might not want to be there. He might just be playing catch up game for the for quite a lot of that early game. Aramis checking runes again. And just he's just making Mambos' life miserable. Boom gets the water rune bottom. Aramis leaves the other one top. So Boom can go secure it as well. And it's going to be hard for Mambos to, to really make... Like, when he hits six, like, who's he trying to hunt down? Like, can you do much against sort of the side lane cores, this Razor and Slot? The Razor you can run at. The Slot yeah. might be a little bit more complicated just because yeah. the Disruptor's there and, you know, the TP's can come in. Boom's already level six. Like, they're going to hit this tower and Mambos might just die to a roar. He actually stepped up. Coming in with TP's. Mambos. And he's actually going to be fine here. Senny, on the other hand, he's coming to die. Oh, I say that. He's got the shield out. Doesn't matter. Another set of axes. Boom gets oh. the kill. Aramis will lose his curry underneath the tower. But he gets his, he has his urn already delivered, so he's got the charges from that one kill. But Mambos will at least survive because of that rotation. So nice play. Nice sacrifice by Senny. Does mean that Curry's alone top for a moment. Actually, for quite a long time because that TP was used. So now Kezu's going to start really bullying Curry up here. 72 damage stolen. Curry cannot last hit at all now for the next few moments. As Shad has stabilized. You know, bottom, it was a little rough for the first few levels, but he's he's caught back up completely. Tipek is getting full free farm too on this Centaur down here, but that's fine. You know, that's expected to happen. Centaur just such a strong hero at the moment when you can go for this, just bracer into the Vanguard almost every game. We'll see Aramis again, maybe seeing if he can get a catch onto Mamboss, but it's hard now. Six is up as long as Mamboss keeps a remnant out defensively. It should be uh, a little harder to take down, especially if they don't have raw. Yeah, they don't have a point in silence yet. Aramis looking yeah. for the level four. His career died. Yeah, he's just running around trying to sap XP mid. Muff, he's actually starting the stack. So Hippomaniacs will have those stacks at the ready for Curry later on or for Mambo. So I mean, either one might have to just take it because they are both getting quite punished. I mean, it's two components already on the Beastmaster, Owen. He's got to have the second piece right now. Like, the time is going to start ticking very quickly. Now, this is, uh, without a doubt, going to be one of the faster acts we've seen from the Beast. I think this... Uh, man, I, I want Muff to stack, but I also want him to make moves to try to shut down the Beast, but I also want him to help tip big bottom. It's it's just tough, the moves that they're going to have to make because of how <laughs> rough that mid lane has really oh, gone. Hey, bottom, look at though. the jump! Chat, he's gone! Nice. Very nice move there from Hippomaniacs, bringing in the two back up, Senny and Muff coming in. Chad saw them coming in too. He just he just exploded. I don't think he expected the damage that was coming up between it all. As Curry continues to just get leashed and forced back to his tower constantly, another 72 damage missing. Has his treads, still level five. We'll need some time to catch up. Yeah, Armas also just Making sure that Curry doesn't get any space to oh. hit the neutrals. Boom actually missed a stack. Okay. So he only has a double stack here at his hard camp. He's been using his boar to actually stack for himself, which is another amazing benefit of the beast map. So you don't even have to have someone stack for you. Yeah, they've got their eyes on Shad again, but yeah, he's hit the six now. So a very tough kill for, for Hippomaniacs really to try and get. Unless Shad you know, messes up or just tries to go aggressive onto them. Yeah, he can just play it safe. I don't think he should ever really play aggro down here. Unless his Beastmaster has a TP available. Like, I don't think he should play very aggro. Just pull, get your levels. Let Celery's able to get some pulls off. You're shutting down the Gyro. Beastmaster's free farming mid. You don't need to do anything forced, really, on the side of Viking. The Onus is now starting to get on Hippomaniacs. And they have to know. That's the thing, is you have to know that this Beastmaster Ags is coming. So I guess they're just accepting it, because they're not looking to even try to pressure him with rotations just yet. They're still playing around bottom. We'll see tip back. What about the Stampede? Get in on top of Celery. They'll get celery. the kill. See if he can get out, though. Muff trying to hold back Shad, but Kezu's come in. And Tipek, he'll fall for his efforts, and so will Muff. They get the slow off from Viking GG. They'll lose yeah, They'll lose the support, but they'll take down two and return for it with the mass TPs coming in to back him up. It's, yeah, it's a, uh, like an unforced error. They didn't want to make this move, but they were like, oh, it's a kill. You know, we'll use your Stampede and Chase. But Viking, this is the way that, this is exactly how Viking wants this game to play out. It's like these moves running at them where they can just TP react quickly like that and get some kind of kill cleanups. And it's it's forcing the hand of Hippomaniacs. And third component, it's online for Beastmaster in a second. Yeah, they're gonna have to be so careful. Um, they, 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 as you said, they've got great control, Vikings. So the opportunities for Boom to to 
get these multiple rounds of axes out, it's not going to be too difficult at all in the team fights. No, definitely not. What neutral items did they get? They didn't get a fairy's trinket, did they? Okay, we didn't see yet, but if they do, you know, those axes even more ridiculous, of course. And we're seeing stacks. Big stacks Many stacks yeah. coming out from Viking all over the place. Curry, he's got the one stack that we mentioned earlier on his triangle, but... And he has, okay, he does have one other one at least also in the safe triangle over here that he's going to start farming. But it's only level one flak. He's actually maxed the barrage, even though he's playing with the full farming in catch-up. I think maybe he regrets that. I think maybe he would have wanted to put more points in flak so that when he backs to jungle, he can just clear a little easier, but not the case. And oh my god, he found the fairy trinket. Oh on. yeah, there you go. And he's got the <laughs> eggs in go. 300. Whoa. I don't, is That's it, the eggs. Is this going to be the fastest? Camp. Or have we seen faster? This is definitely we very fast. We saw like a 10 minute 11 one. This okay, might beat this it. Might... It's going to be close. Oh, I see. I don't remember the exact timing Come on it, on, but it was like see. a 10 minute something. He's going to have the gold and an axe throw or two. Next round of axes will do it. We're just watching him throw axes, right? I'm not watching into the lane right now. <laughs> oh, come on, more creep. He's got the money. Buy it. It's on its way. Okay, fairy trinket, oh. max axes, level 10. Let's go. Game has now begun. Well, Boom I, can now leave the mid lane and start slaughtering everybody. Because I I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know how our stats work, if it works when he has the components or when it's put together or when it's actually like on the actual hero. I don't know. Is the timing it's when, when it's on the on hero? I think it's when it's on the actual hero. He thinks right? when it's on the actual hero. So, okay, I believe so. So, yeah. wow. Look at that time. 10, 23, 24. Oh. Ags, boots, soul ring, bottle. He's gotten babysat. Level 10 also. Almost level 11. Pre-11 minute mark. Wait, it's Game that is much about faster? To turn up. Did you see that? Oh, How okay. That, okay, then this patch fight—that was the event. So yeah, but one minute and yeah. twelve seconds faster than the patch fastest. I didn't really. Yeah, it, it was that much quicker. That's a huge, a huge new record here in terms of the speed. Yeah, I guess we're not going to be seeing quicker than this. I don't think so. That no, was. That's, I mean, he has 115 CS and he's 2-0. Like, <laughs> uh, all right, Hippo Maniacs. The, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Boom with we're going to have fun the, watching this. Probably the fastest Ag time, and you'll see this patch on Beastmaster. I think Im immediately, Muff, yeah, you queue up the Ag Scepter. You're like, all right, well, we got to just play their game. You know, we got to throw the axes back. And here we go. Go for the rush. Yeah, JJ just sent me all the uh, timers. So the, it was 11.34, 12.08, and 12.18. So smashes the record. I mean, they, they did see this, Hippos. They did. Well, I know now as well. We've all been taken away, so they're absolutely aware of this going on. And they're not doing anything about it. That's uh, an 11 minute, 40 second rush. Oh, boy. All okay, boom. well, all boom. so I see Mambos. He takes the Flame Guard Absorption talent. So that's going to help a little versus Axes, I guess. And that's, that's, maybe. A, that's a new record here at this event as well for Roshan kill timing. 11 Jesus. minutes 39. The previous one was 15.56. So 4 minutes 17 seconds faster than the last record. So uh, breaking all the records here, boom. And, uh, you know, oh I think uh, bonus points, of course, considering that was a solo, Rosh, as well. You know, probably that other timing was probably not a solo, well, a solo one. That was probably a team effort. My lord. Okay, well, game is online for Viking. 3k advantage. Tipek, he does have a Blink Dagger done in a second. So he is still quite strong, but man, fighting into these axes, it's going to be... It's going to be devastating. Like, the supports are just going to die. Oh no, Muff. Look Run! At Muff. Run! Run, Muff! Oh my goodness. And the thing is, he has Aegis. Like, that's the, that's the silly part. It's like, alright, maybe if he's out of position, we can punish him. But he's got Aegis, so he can just play... Kind of as aggressive as he wants. Is Tipek? Oh, he's gone in. The move. And he's gone out. And he's, uh, he's, yeah, out. He's, he's opted against this now. He's running away. Boom's kind of low on mana, though. So if you can bring him down the once, Boom. And he's going to go down once here. We've got the cooldown okay. ready for a second time. See if they can focus down Boom. But Boom. And he's not getting prioritized here. He's still able to lay down Mambos. the axes. Roars out onto Mambos. Mambos is trying to run, but he's been silenced. And very, very low. Curry has been able to turn, take down a few of them. Boom also getting very low, but another set of axes oh is out onto Muff. Mambos is getting a big there cleanup here, though. Triple kill overall for Mambos. Does get Boom at the end of it. I mean, all things said and done, that, that's quite a hefty XP boost, you got to imagine, for, for the Ember Spirit. Yeah, you see that 2.5k XP from that fight. 900 gold. He I did mean, more damage than the Beastmaster yeah, did in that fight. Yeah, that, that's... That's pretty big. They they just gave away a lot to the Ember. 
That was uh, actually, so the Flame Guard absorption actually came into play. Yeah. He, actually, he absorbed so many axes because he went for this talent. And I, you have to watch Senny. He survived during all of this fight. I don't even know how many shields he ended up casting, like five, six shields just to remove some axe stacks. It was clutch. That was actually a really well executed fight from Hippo Maniacs. Because Boom started that fight at what, 80 mana? So then when he respawned, it was a little awkward for him. All right. Maybe that's why they picked the last pick Ember. I mean, that's it. That, I mean, that's such a, a huge boost that Manboss gets from that play. I'll see what he does with it. See if he can he can build up to be the threat that, that they need to, to tackle Viking hit. That's an impressive, impressive battle. Into the into the Aegis, into the Ags, with the blink from the Centaur, Tipek getting a pretty good initiation that yeah, now has them in a, you know, they're still in a really tough spot, but at least they have these double Maelstroms finished up, so their damage is high in the fights if they're able to actually keep the Ember and the Gyro alive as long as I possible. Mean, yeah. And, you know, if Rubik can get the Ags, you know, they, like Rubik, once he has the Ags, it, it is better. He's just better it's than the Beastmaster. Beast right? You are a better yep. Beastmaster. So if Man Boss can have a good game, if Curry can find the farm, may, maybe they can work, Maybe they can do it here, this game here, Pose. Maybe they have got the tools required to to, to shake up what was obviously quite a frightening looking start from, from Vikings lineup with how fast Boom was getting his items online. Maybe Hippo's got the, the, the draft to stop him. Maybe. They have to get these really good initiations, though. We have to watch Tipek, how much they can do, and how long they can survive. Like, Mambos has to get, like, nine slights of fists off in these fights in order to be able to clear out these targets. Because it still is tough. He's still very vulnerable to just getting caught. A stun, a silence, oh, etc. He can just die as so they can burst Celery. Oh, not quite. Celery's going to be fine. And now he's able to turn his head. Uh -oh. got them two of them in the static storm. Roll four from Aramis. Roar down onto Mambos. Mambos needs help. Are they able to give it to him in time? They're not. They Mambos goes down. And Shad takes out the two of them. He's now going to turn over towards Steady. Glimpse brings back Muff. Oh, God. As Hippo Mania Max, they're dropping one by one here. Triple kill for Shad. Four dead. And we saw, we saw maybe just a bit of a glimpse of hope for Hippos in that previous fight. But this fight... I sort of, uh, they, they just get hit hard by reality here. And they go into the enemy high ground. The oh, other Curry. fight is actually like on their side, and now Curry too, Shad. He's got the defusal. That's going to be a team wipe. Oh, and he doesn't oh. want to dive. He doesn't want to dive. He hasn't got the shadow dance. Kezu does. Ah, they've got the wrap around. Curry, he needs help. They're bringing over a TP from Senny. Curry. He's turning towards okay. Aramis. Maybe he can bring down Aramis. Aramis rolling away just in time. The axe nope. is from Boom. will finish Curry off. They're trying to, to come in to, to form some sort of a defense around this tier two, but Viking, they're ready to just fight them underneath it. As that's Tipek. Muff gone, Tipek tries to jump in. Mambos with the follow-up. Can they bring down Boom? Boom getting low. They can. They can. They bring down Boom. Can Mambos catch anything more out of this one? He's chasing down Kezu. Another remnant in. He's closed the gap. Chains out. Shad's turning, though. Starts to force back Mambos, but Tipek's they're in the jump. Tipek. He's in on top of Kezu. Kezu will fall. Another kill for Mambo. Shad trying to take down Tipex. Senny healing him up with the Mist Coil. It doesn't matter though. Shad will still finish off the kill. I like that they're fighting back. The one by one TPs in from Hippomaniac somehow ends up working for them. Mambo's gets some they're nice speed up kills. They're not done yet. Kills. They're going to nope, see they can catch another man. Mambo. He's got the chains on to Celery. Celery, he's going to fall as well. Another one here for Mambo. Become peace. Shad? He should be just fine here, but they're gonna they're gonna annoy him. He's not got Shadow Dance, he has got a pounce though. And Manboss a little on the mana, so no tools to continue chasing. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm surprised that they're able to continue battling. Un under their tower, they just one by one TP everyone in. Shad though. He's going for they can get isolated. He's Tip trying. Tipex back in the game. But right, Shad playing it safe. I say that he's, yeah, he's sort of wondering if he could get back in on this at these two. Doesn't nearly have okay. his BKB done. Shad, very close to that. So that will allow him to, to get away with these sort of moves w without having to run. They're going to have triple BKB timing, actually, on the side of Viking. Yeah. It looks like the Razor, the Slark. Yeah, all three cores are going for those BKBs to be able to cover themselves since it is a lot of magic damage still coming out since they went double Maelstrom. That's going to make the fights that much harder for Hippo Maniacs. They're going to have to outplay pretty hard. Mambos has, has nearly got his axe. So... Yeah, if they can somehow you know, get the early BKBs used in the fights, bait them out, and then play in this sort of fashion where Mambos has been able to sort of chase them down one by one after Vikings use like their their initial assault, and may, maybe Mambos, maybe Mambos can do it. 
Maybe he's still, like we said though, he's tankier because he's going for the Axe build, but yeah. he doesn't have a protection, right? If he gets caught in a stun sure, or, he's or something deep, like that, yeah. he, can, he can just die. If Senny's not there to bail him out, this Ember may just die in like one of those disables. So it does still have to be very Ooh. careful of his positioning. Oh, that was close. Yeah, nice read by Tipek, but not quite there in time. And Muff, you know, he's he's on his way. 1300, Owen. You know, he's almost got it. I see, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Axe all around. You know, Curry's also nearly got his done. So, yeah, with the Maelstrom and the Axe, if they can keep the game going, Curry, Curry's going to be farming pretty well. As long as they can you know, stop feeding kills to Shad, the Gyro will be able to farm easier than the Slark. Yeah, Senny, he's caught in the front lines. I'm going to roll them out the with the Stampede. Tipex jumps in, but the BKB's out from Boom. Turns with the lockdown onto Tipex. Senny tries to come in with the Aphotic Shield to help Tipex out. As Shad's in with the BKB, takes down Senny, takes down Tipex. They get the two of them. Now the oh, movement no, Curry. towards Curry. Curry's trying to fight back, but the Shadow Dance is available from Shad. He just pushes on. They take another triple kill for Boom. Man boss has got to get out. He's out into the trees with the TP. Aramis still on the hunt, seeing if he can find Muff. Shad. Closing the gap. They've got the slow from the defusal. Muff will Mambos go down. Did. Ultra kill for Boom. Oh, no. And Mambos, he tried to jump in, but he's straight into the static storm. It's going to be a team wipe. Aramis took the kill. He took the rampage. <laughs> oh. I, when you're ahead and you're playing with heroes, like like these heroes that are just so good about like just the constant chase forward and getting the next kill, Slark to give the vision, Beastmaster to give the vision, and then Disruptor and Earth Spirit. Yeah. When you get these like starts of fights where like Senny gets gone on first, all the way on the left side, they can consecutively chase the heroes that are just trying to escape. So Curry, he wants to run away from the fight. He gets glimpsed back in the middle of everything, and then they continue to just chase forward. Hippomaniacs, now they get hit really hard. It's going to be tough to recover from that one. Wow. Down 8k now, 20 to 10. One of those Tipping four. Senny, because <laughs> he glimpses him all the time. Uh. Shad's hiding. And Tipek, well, he's going to get found here. Shad's oh, in. Oh, it's hard. He's got this DD rune. Shad punching hard and fast. They're trying to hold him back. Uh, he's going to have Stampy back up. That might just save Tipek. He's out to the okay, side. Aramis, Aramis, Aramis is going to get turned upon. They take down Aramis now with the axe chase. They're ready to go for more. They jump over towards Celery. They bring down the disruptor as well. Shad will manage to finish off Tipek. With the BKB starting to wear off, he's got to back away. As Hippo Maniacs, they'll find two and they'll, they'll only lose the one for it. Decent comeback. Who got the kills? Did Muff get one? Oh, Muff didn't get one. Okay, so he's 450 got gold to two. He's got axe. the eggs. It's, it's, they got to get it to him. It's so important. Give him this mid wave. Yeah. Good job. Let him farm it. Oh, we'll see this earlier fight. Uh, boom. You know, they, they, they just... They just over like they just get on top of them. Look at this. They just yeah. surround them completely with their heroes. It's so easy for them to chase forward as soon as they get one or two. And look at this. Look at this poor Mambos jumps in right into the Static Storm. And the Rampage celery. still. You know, it's like, it, you can uh, accept it if it was Celery getting the kill, because Static Storm's down, but he rolls in and takes it. <laughs> he has auto attack on. He rolled like, in and the auto he attack, was the auto finish attack got afterwards. It. <laughs> Damn it, Aramis. Oh, what do we have here? So uh, we've got the Agnum Shard on Slark. Something you get to see all the time. Love it. I think this is one of the stronger shards, actually, that we mm -hmm. don't get to see too often, but especially versus any type of, like, just hard stuns. Like a centaur, you get your supports, get caught inside that centaur stun, you instantly de depth rouge. And then what do they do? Shroud them, and they're good. Yeah, they're gonna live, yeah. they're gonna reset the fight. A lot of fun interactions I was testing with that too. Like it cancels duel, it messes with a couple other ones too. Really good versus Magnus, if you guys hate Magnus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess, oh, hang on. What's going on here? Oh, Tipek, he tries to get in. Will manage to bait out the BKB from Kezu, but Kezu's uh -oh. ready to charge straight into the box. The BKB up to the high ground he goes. And on top of Curry, the static lead from Muff. Kezu totally eliminating the gyro from the fight as Curry goes down. Muff trying to run, but Aramis is in with the chase, gets on top, and then three dead. Roar over onto Manboss as Boom sets up for another. Manboss will fall, four dead. Seni, he's also going to go down. Shad oh, able to boy. catch him on the way out as it's a full team wipe yet again. Starts very awkward. Hippo Maniacs with the stampede to go. And as soon as that stampede runs out, they just get fully collapsed on. Muff got Ags. He stole Axes. Aramis followed him. He just kept the silence on him fully and just full <laughs> full collapse on Rubik. No Axes for you, even though you do have Ags as Viking. Continue to dominate this game now. 15k gold lead. 20k experience lead soon. Yeah, just heads up. 
move as well. You know, Kezu realizing as soon as Stampede was used aggressively, he just he just had the BKB walk in and find the gyro, and his yep. job would be done. Just get in, link up Curry, and suddenly the any potential that they have for a team fight just dwindles over the seconds passing. Everyone did the. Everyone went for the target they should go, right? Like Kezu gets on Curry, drains him. Aramis gets on the Rubik, who has the axes. Shad's just stealing stats from the Abad and the Ember and the Centaur. Yeah, it's just, it's great stuff coming up from Viking. Right. Hippomaniacs. Trying to get out. Now just getting botched in on. Oh, boom. The party's boom. just walking around from the back. He's popping the BKB, roaring onto Curry. Curry's gone. Boom already looking for the next target, getting the axes laid down on Tamaf. Chad turning towards Senny. He's going to start building Axe up these stacks. stacks. Getting them up nicely here as he takes down Senny. And he's ready to start diving in towards the base. The glimpse back on Tamaf. Manboss trying to get in and get out. Will manage to take down Celery with the nice. damage there of the remnants. And the buyback come out as well from Senny as Hippos will try their best to, to defend the high ground. Chad. Should be fine, has ages. Can we get us? Can we get some damage numbers by any chance? I kind of want to look at them if we do have them. I don't know if they, they're working right now, but... Okay, yeah, that looks appropriate. It's actually, it's not as ridiculous as like, some of the other games we have seen, but... Pretty damn high. Mambos, I mean, Mambos' damage is impressive, though. No, Mambos, yeah, he's putting the work in here. Tip back. Uh Oof. Oof. That's rough. Got to be careful how close you get to these two. As now onto the objectives, Viking. Taking down the tier threes. Hippos, what have they got? 30 seconds, no Tipek. See if they can do enough with the axe spamming. They can hold the high ground. If Muff. What neutral item? Muff. Ah, oh, he's only got a faded, bro. So I was checking his rest of his. He's got essence ring. He doesn't have no fairy trinket, so he's not blessed. No. They're, they're going to need even. Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the opportunity to pass for that one. But the headband would be nice. It's probably sort of nice. the, the next the next best one if you if you want to be sitting on the high ground spamming out axes from a distance. Have that extra cast range. Ah, because ceremonial robe. Ah, he might be too far for ceremonial robe actually. Uh, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I, it's, it's quite a big radius ceremonial robe. But you're right. It, it, once he has like ether lens and stuff, he's going to be chucking these axes very far. Yeah, his cast range yeah. is already like yeah. What? Ah, it doesn't matter. It's really far. There we go with the chase down. Curry. Curry getting pretty much completely linked to it. They do manage to burst. Burst through the, the shots lock the once. I don't know if they're doing it again, though, as they're back underneath the tier fours and they've got no curry now. Link on boom. The axes. Jeez. I, well, you know what? They have uh, they have status resist on the side of Vikings, so those axes don't actually last as long. And Shad can just dark pack it off, too. So they have their own ways to dispel these. Oh, Tippet's gonna try for the jump, but Boo's caught with the BKB, Muff. turns with the roar onto Muff, Muff's out. He's got the buyback, he'll use it immediately here. My god, poor Tippet. Eight stacks. I was gonna say they've gotta get him back. Well. Kesu's in. And oh, Ooh. he's gonna get kicked to safety there by Aramis. Chad, he's looking to dive in underneath the towers. Tippet jumps into his death. Manboss getting fully focused, said he can't do anything to help him as Manboss is out for 80 seconds. No buyback and Viking, they're going to start diving towards the fountain as they rip apart Senny, take down Muff and turn their attention GG. over towards Curry as that's it. GG, well played as Viking will take this game one. It was a tough one for the Hippos as expected, but uh, some of the individual performances from Viking looking very hot. Boom having a phenomenal time on the beast.